What do people do in a mukbang? <laughs> Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Jessica and I am a digital nomad currently living in Anchorage, Alaska and I finally tried out Fire Island Rustic Bake Shop. Everybody's been telling me to go there and I should have listened sooner. Spoiler alert. <laughs> so today's video is going to be a mukbang where you're going to eat, I'm going to eat some treats from Fire Island Rustic Bake Shop and give you a review of them. Spoiler alert, it's unbelievable. <laughs> so grab out, go get some coffee, go get some pastries or whatever you wanna eat and let's eat together. Let's rewind and take you back to my walk to Fire Island Rustic Bake Shop and the rest of the video. Thanks for watching guys. Okay, who's ready for this? I'm not ready, I'm too excited. We're gonna start off with the coffee. This is just regular coffee. They don't have, I thought it was like a coffee shop, but it's just um, a bake shop. But of course they have regular coffee, so we got that. Nice and chilled now, <laughs> after walking with it. Mmm. Oh my God. Talk about high quality. I don't even want to put creamer in it because it literally tastes too good. Oh my god, the workers were so nice. The place was so cool. I tried to get a few clips for you. I asked for recommendations because it was way too overwhelming to choose something. So I chose a chocolate croissant, a chocolate chip cookie by recommendation and oh yeah a raspberry lemon scone is this too much I don't know they had to try a multiple things okay I'm gonna go in with the recommendation first the raspberry lemon scone oh my god this looks so good Oh, my God. Hmm. First of all, I don't need bread. So bread is pretty exciting right now. Hmm. Second of all, I can't even. I can't even. The quality of this, the butter that I taste, the flavors of the raspberry and lemon are really subtle, which is fine. I'm not, I'm not complaining. I mean, this has to be the best quality scone I've ever had. I mean, this is Europe levels of good. I've never tasted anything even close to what Europe has to offer here. And this, I can't even, you guys. Hmm. I don't even know what to say. Actually, it's good. Look at that inside. I mean. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Okay. I'm, I'm scared <laughs> for how good the rest of this is. I really am. Okay. I'm going into the croissant. How do I do this? Do I break off a piece or do I... Do I just take a bite? I'm just going to take a bite.
I don't think that's the right way to do it. Oh my god. Hmm. The chocolate. The chocolate. Oh my god. That is just way too good. No. <laughs> I keep looking that way because my host is coming to drop off a light bulb soon. I feel like she's going to come while I'm stuffing my face with a croissant. No. That's so good. Okay, now the chocolate chip cookie. Oh, by the way, this really wasn't that expensive by Alaska standards. Oh my god, look at how, like, pillowy that looks. Mmm. Okay, I'm about to destroy my stomach at this place. <laughs> Crap. Because <laughs> I'm here for... I'm actually here for less than two weeks at this point. Mm. Oh my god. I dipped it in the coffee. Thank you, y'all. Mm -mm. That is just way too good. This should literally be illegal. I... I can't even. I can't even. I might need to make this its own fucking video. Sorry for the swearing. Um, okay, I'm gonna do have the chocolate croissant in here. This is just a mukbang. Uh oh. I'm a mess. I'm a mess. Okay. That doesn't need to be dipped because then it takes away the like pillowiness. Let's try dipping the scone. Should I give you guys a different angle? How's that? Oh my god. This is so good. I can't even. Mm. Raspberry and coffee? I don't know about that. It's so good. It's crispy on the outside. And fluffy as hell on the inside. I'm sorry you guys can't taste this. I really am. Holy crap. It's already been eight minutes. So I wonder if I should just uh mm. Okay. Let's continue. <laughs> oh my god. Well, this is the best thing I've eaten in Alaska. Screw the salmon. This is butter. I don't know if I'm more of a savory or a sweet person. Oh my God, the savory stuff they had. This freaking like bread thing like covered in cheese with like the tomato and the fried egg that looked so good but I was really prepared for sweets today so we went with the sweets 
I never expected to be doing a mukbang on this channel. If you never heard of a mukbang, by the way, I'll explain it to you halfway through the video. It's where somebody just eats. On camera. This is the best food I've had in a long time. Mm. See if Boise can compete with this. <laughs> if you're new to my channel, I'll be going to Boise, Idaho after this in like a month-ish. Oh my god. What do I talk about? <laughs> a lot of times people do like a Q&A during this type of video. But, um, I didn't prepare that. <laughs> I had no idea I was filming this video actually until like 60 seconds ago. If I had to pick a favorite of the three of these things, it's probably the chocolate chip cookie, and then the scone, and then the croissant. The croissant was the thing I chose myself. The worker told me to have the scone and the chocolate chip cookie. So, I know what you're talking about. I'm going to be leaving this place. I've been here for... I've been here since December 21st, and I'm leaving February 8th. So, I've been... I have mixed feelings. Like, I, as I've had in every place in Alaska I've been. I kind of don't want to leave, because the idea of packing... <laughs> Just it's not very exciting to me. But also the place I'm going to next, I am so excited. It's like really close to the mountains. And it's um, it's not in downtown Anchorage, it's like on the outskirts. So I'm hoping to see more moose, more animals besides birds. I've been loving the birds I've been seeing. That's been so much fun. Again, an unexpected thing. When I came to Alaska, I didn't really expect um I didn't expect the birds to be that interesting cuz I don't I never really cared about birds that much, but that's all I've seen. And I've, I've quite enjoyed my time with the birds. What do people do in a mukbang? <laughs> I don't care, like I'm still gonna put this video up. Okay, there's gonna be like some cuts in this. Again, I explained how to do the video. There's gonna be cuts in this because I have to um, make the clip smaller so that my um, internet can handle the download. Do you guys hear that dog barking? That dog barks a lot. <laughs> can be quite annoying sometimes. <laughs> mm. Oh my god, this is so good. just put the light bulbs outside. She looks like the sweetest woman ever. Like honestly, I want to hug her. <laughs> she looks so sweet. She looks really young. I don't know if this video is good. 
I mean, I know the beginning is good where I'm tasting this for the first time. <laughs> but I've actually been watching a... I kind of get bored of YouTube videos pretty quick, but... Well, I guess when I like the person's personality, I will watch them sit and talk about anything. But... Um... Yeah, hopefully you guys are eating something with me, because otherwise... It probably is boring. I don't know. Let me know. Because I could totally do more of these. I mean... When you're sitting at home... By yourself... <laughs> eating meals, like... You could always throw on the camera. You know? I cannot get over how sweet that lady seemed. <laughs> she literally looked like the sweetest woman on earth. I fucking love Airbnb. As a solo traveler. I mean, Airbnb and hostel both good ways to go. But I think as, as a solo traveler, um, going in Airbnbs, now of course it's a little bit different with COVID now because you're kind of avoiding each other in a way, like she was just going to drop it outside, probably because of COVID. Um, but... Um, the experiences that I've had living in Airbnbs, like especially if you just do like a room in somebody's house or a guest suite in somebody's house, um, that's really amazing. And I stay for long periods of time. So usually you end up developing a little bit of a relationship with the person who lives there. And then like it depends on how interactive they are and how much you get along as with any person. But... I mean, I feel like I have friends across the world, across Europe, really, where I've been, and in Alaska now, because I just, just, I've met some incredible people, like, I actually could cry when I think about some of them, like, the sweetest lady in, um, Zagreb, no, not Zagreb, well, in Zagreb, oh, I'll go there first, in Zagreb, the super kind woman, um, when my grandmother passed away, I was in Zagreb and I was living in this woman's apartment. It was like attached to her house. It was its own separate thing, but it's attached by this little hallway. So like you're kind of roommates, sort of. Um, just the cutest little place. And I actually don't have any video of it because I wasn't filming around I wasn't vlogging at the time that I was living in Zagreb, kind of going through like an existential crisis. <laughs> um, but this woman was there, you know, I'm halfway across the world when my grandma passes away. And obvious, and it was a shock. I mean, she wasn't really, it wasn't clear that, you know, we didn't know she was going to pass away. Sorry for like randomly bringing this up, but, um, you know, this woman was there, physically, with me, and that was really helpful. Why am I... I'm about to cry all of a sudden. Oh my. Um, yeah, this, this woman was there with me, and we had some wine and some chocolate and just chatted. And I mean, I was in a state of shock, and she was there for me. And it was really, really nice. And thank you to her. <laughs> because she was, yeah, she was there for me. And she was the sweetest woman. Uh, we were going to go on like a bike ride together. We probably would have ended up hanging out a little bit if um, I hadn't left. And I'm, I'm really planning on going back there um, whenever I get back to Europe. <laughs> Which, I mean, I know for a fact I'm going to be back in Europe. But I, I really want to go to Southeast Asia next. Like, my heart has been calling me there. I'm ready to travel outside of Europe, like Western countries, basically. I'm ready for South America and Asia. And I'm so excited for Asia. I really want to go to Thailand and Bali and uh, Malaysia 
and Vietnam. <laughs> I really am, I really just want to go everywhere. But like, I'm kind of a Buddhist. I, I really relate to Buddhist principles and everything I've ever read about Buddhism has really just felt right to me. And so going to countries where Buddhism is the main religion or what a big religion and seeing temples and a place where the history of Buddhism is long and vast and rich, that's really exciting to me. So I'm I'm so ready to go there. As soon as COVID is over, we're going to Southeast Asia. Also, it's cheap there. And you guys know if you watch this channel, I don't make that much money. So to be able to go there, pay off some debts that I have while still living like a good life, dream, right? <laughs> so I'm really excited about that. But then anyways, back to Zagreb. I was going to go after Asia, if that's possible, I want to start back in the place where I left in Europe, which is Zagreb. And I was initially about to go to Romania next. I was going to meet my friend there, actually, which she is from Romania, and originally. So that would have been a really, really cool experience. But that didn't happen. Um, so my plan is to go back to Europe starting in Zagreb and kind of continue the trip that I had planned, which, well, I really didn't have it planned, <laughs> but I pretty much it was to go to Eastern Europe and see a lot of the countries over there because I've seen most of Western Europe except for France and Switzerland. Um, well, there's other places too, but like, I feel so bad that I haven't been to France because I would meet French people when I traveled and they'd be like, oh, where have you been? And I would list all the countries surrounding France, but not France. <laughs> and it's like, oh, I guess Americans don't like France. <laughs> um, truly, I've been actually scared to go there because I heard from my media that the French hate Americans. It's the freaking dumbest thing on earth. Like... The shit we believe because of the media, don't even get me started. I'm going to get off that topic. I was talking about the people I meet in Airbnbs. So, I was about to bring up this woman that I met in Split, Split, Croatia. Oh my god, this woman, she does some kind of like healing um, energy work, like, with the chakras or something, it, I don't think it was exactly the chakras, unless it was, and we just, like, there was a communication barrier, but she does some kind of energy work, and she was just the sweetest woman. Mm. And we really connected. We really connected um, on a deep level. And like she took me to the grocery store one time. Oh, and then the man that I met in Portugal. Mm. Oh my god. This guy was like an Uber driver. And he was just a really fascinating man. I don't know, it was cool. Sometimes you can be... I, I am a bit weary to live with men when I travel because I'm just a really, really cautious person. But this guy had a lot of, a ton of reviews because he been, he's been on Airbnb for a really long time. And there were um, a mix of men, male and female reviews and they were all really good. So I stayed with him and think I'm so glad I did because he was really really interesting guy to talk to and a great introduction to Portugal 
and oh my god I love Portugal so much <laughs> like when <clears throat> Portugal might be one of my favorite countries I don't know I, I feel like I have a strong draw to like Spain and Portugal and it might be because I under I'm wondering if it has to do with the language like I speak some Spanish right so maybe I kind of have a better idea of what's going on or I just like relate to that type of culture more not really sure also Spain was the first place I ever traveled outside of the US so it has a really special place in my heart like it awoken awoken it awoke all of this like come on mm. there's a lot of gluten but at least it's not ultra processed like all this stuff is made like right in there you know so I feel like maybe it won't affect me as much I don't know When I travel in Europe, I eat everything, bread, cheese, tons of coffee, sweets. I don't get sick the way I do here. I did have a um, health issue when I was in Croatia, but that was because I ran out of my medicine. It wasn't because of anything Croatia did. So, um, the quality of food in Europe, way better than the quality of food here. And I've talked to a lot of people like that too. Some people that I met in Europe or people that have been to Europe said that the food here just makes them feel sick. And you can eat the same things exact same things Europe and America the American food will make you feel sick like I've, I've experienced this two times in my life mm. I used to have kind of a gross story while we're eating but I used to have this wart on my foot this huge wart like this thing was nasty okay <laughs> and it was there for years years and could never get rid of it. I went to Europe to study abroad junior year of college. And I, the wart went away. I didn't do anything. I ate normal food that I would normally eat here and it just went away out of nowhere. I mean, if that is not a sign right there that the food quality is better and there's something to do with the food, I don't know what is. And that's not the only thing, like also other health issues, like just digestion. And so I finished, you guys. Okay, so this video is like, what, 45 minutes long? <laughs> I have no idea. I'm not done with my coffee yet, though. So should I go or not? I don't know. <laughs> if you made it this far in the video, let me know. And let me know if you want to do another muk mukbang. <laughs> I don't know how to say that word. I really don't. But if you want me to do another one of these, let me know. Because this was really fun. <laughs> it was like I was eating a meal with somebody. Um, what is happening with this? I need to cut my hair. Like, well, I, I wouldn't cut it now. But I cut my hair once a year right before the summer, typically. And this is just, I feel like it's time. I'm ready to cut it. But I want to wait until it's warm out. But this is getting long. Also, there's no scissors. So I could try and like hack away with a knife, but <laughs> I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, so as I was saying, if you guys made it to this part of the video, please let me know down below. And let me know if you want another one of these. I'm happy to do it. And... Um... Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.